At nagpapatuloy po ang ating pag-aaral ng Book of John, yung tinatawag nating Church-Wide Study of the Book of John, known as the Book of John Challenge. At nalurong pa rin po tayo sa chapter 1, ngunit malapit na tayong matapos sa pag-aaral ng chapter na yan, as we finish discussing some of the most important uh, Bible characters mentioned in that chapter. The last time, tinalakay natin yung tinatawag na the first disciples of Jesus Christ, beginning with Andrew. And uh, tonight, tatalakayin natin yung kapatid niya na kilala nating lahat bilang si the Apostle Peter. Bilang si the Apostle Peter. Na to a great extent, we can even actually say na itong pag-aaralan natin ngayong gabi is probably one of the most important figures in the history of Christianity. Isa sa pinakasikat na role model natin lahat, especially when it comes to leadership and service unto God. From the Bible times up to the present time, this we can say that Peter truly has a special faith in our faith. What does the Bible really teach us concerning him is a focus of our message for tonight, which is actually the first part of a three-part series just on Peter, na pinamagatampo nating lessons from the life and ministry of Peter, part one. Misa pa po tayo muko, pumikit, manalangin sa Panginoon. Let us commit to the Lord the study of His Word. Aming Diyos at aming Ama, nagpapasalamat po kami sa gabing ito na minsan pa binigyan niyo po kami ng pagkakataon na maka-worship together, maka-worship sa inyo. Salamat po sa aming mga kapatid sa Panginoon na pinangunahan po kami sa intimate time of praise and worship. We also thank you Lord for our leaders and volunteers in church na sila po yung nagsisipag para may mga ganitong klaseng mga gawain. And even for our attendees and guests, we thank you Lord for their presence Natutuwa po kami na kasama namin sila lahat ngayong gabi. Ngunit higit sa lahat, kami nagpapasalamat sa inyong presensya. Nagpapasalamat po kami sa presensya ng banal na Espiritu sa aming kalagitnaan. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, to move powerfully and mightily in our midst in the name of Jesus Christ. Kayo po ang uh, tunay na maging guro. Kayo po ang mangusap sa inyong mga anak. Gamitin mo ko bilang inyong tagapagsalita. Let everything that I shall say today be correct. Let everything I shall say today, Lord, be coming from you. Words of encouragement, comfort, guidance, and blessing for your people. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we rebuke all works of Satan. Na lahat ng gawa ng kaaway, kung kanina pa yung umaga, sa aming bahay, sa aming trabaho, mga napag-awayan namin ng aming mga mahal sa buhay, kaibigan, mga panggugulo na ginagawa ni Satan in our lives and in our ministry. We rebuke all of that in Jesus' name. We rebuke all of that in the name of Jesus Christ. At naniniwala po kami, Panginoon, ngayong gabi, as we have chosen to worship you and to listen to this message, we will truly once again experience victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We lift to you all of our problems, We lift to you all of our trials, testings, and challenges, and we choose to trust you, Lord, have faith in you, as we pray all of this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, this is our prayer. All God's people say, Amen. 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 Palakpakan po natin muli ang Panginoon. Huwag po tayo magsawa na magpuri at magpasalamat sa Kanya. Praise the Lord. Lalong-lalo na ngayong gabi sa pag-aaral na gagawin po natin sa buhay ni Apostol pa, uh, Pedro as we study the life and ministry of Peter. John chapter 1 verses 40 to 42 in the Bible says, John chapter 1 verses 40 to 42 in the Bible says, One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Now when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. Mula po dyan sa mga verses na binasa natin ngayong gabi, eh, binabalikan po natin yung uh, uh, enkwentro ng tinatawag na the first disciples ni Jesus Christ with Jesus. At syempre, mula po dyan sa mga verses na yan, eh, meron tayo ilang mga lessons sa mapupulot tulad ng uh, mga babanggitin natin ngayong gabi. Some lessons we can learn from the life of Peter, especially taking from these verses and from later on other verses in Scripture. Number one, may kita po natin doon sa ating binasa how he met 
Jesus. Paano niya unang nakilala si Jesus Christ? You know, parang tayo yan eh. May kanya-kanya tayong story o kwento. Halimbawa, kung paano natin nakilala ang ating asawa. Kung paano natin nakilala ang ating mga kasama ngayon sa accommodation. O mga kasama natin sa church. And there comes a time that people even ask you, pag medyo curious sila, no, paano kayo nagkakilala niyan? Bakit kayo lagi magkasama pag umaaten sa church? But napansin ko sa worship service, lagi kayo magkatabi. Pwede namang sa iba ka umupo. O, pero ba't ganyan? Minsan nga nalilito na ako, parang magkamukhang magkamukha na kayo. Nasabihan na ba kayo ng ganyan? Na kung sino yung lagi niyong katabi sa church, eh para nagiging kamukha niyo. Tingnan niyo nga lang sa glitch yung katabi niya. At sabihin niyo sa akin kung papayag kayo. Sabihin niyo lang sa akin kung papayag ba kayo. na yung lagi niyong katabi sa church, eh kamukha mo. Papayag ba kayo? Amen! Amen na lang. Sige na. Amen na lahat. Amen. Amen. Sometimes, yes, we get to be curious. Bakit yung dalawang yun lagi magkasama? Uh, pa- paano sila napunta sa church? How did they met? What's their story? Kahit ako natatanong ng ganyan eh. Halimbawa, doon sa assistant pastor natin, people, uh, uh, lalo na pag napapatagal na sa church natin, curious sila sa ganon, paano po kayo nagkakilala ni assistant pastor po natin ganito? Paano po kayo nagkakilala ni ganyan? At lahat naman talaga kasi may kwento. At ganon din si Peter. May kwento kung paano niya na-meet si Jesus Christ. Balikan lang natin ulit yung John chapter 1, verses 41 to 42 at makikita natin doon yung how he met Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. Now when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. Mula dyan, at dun sa nauna nating binasang mas buong bahagi ng John 1, 40 to 42, at ito naman 41 to 42, eh makikita po natin na may isang karakter by the name of Andrew. Yan yung kapatid ni Apostle Peter. Nauna na si Andrew ay disciple ni John the Baptist. And remember in our previous messages we discussed na yun ang ministry ni John the Baptist to prepare the way for the coming of Jesus Christ. And along the way, as he was doing this ministry, he was preaching, he was baptizing people for repentance, nakalikom din siya ng kanyang mga sariling disciples and one of them was Andrew. But the day came, kung saan, sabi na ni John the Baptist, yung pinipreach natin, yung dahilan kung ba't meron tayong water baptism, yung itinuturo ko sa inyo, ayan na siya, oh, behold, the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sins of the world. At very receptive si Andrew doon, kaya after that particular moment, also in the book of John chapter 1, he now followed Jesus. So from being a disciple of John the Baptist, Andrew eventually became a disciple of Jesus Christ. And one of the first things that Andrew did was to go to his brother and tell his brother yung nababalitaan natin, yung kinukwento sa akin ni John the Baptist, ito na, namit ko na, oh, kaya halika na, dadaling kita sa kanya. And here we see how Peter met Jesus. His brother Andrew introduced him to Jesus. His brother Andrew introduced him to Jesus. Na dito lang, dito pa lang, dito pa lang, meron na tayong matututunan. na kung kayo ngayon nandito sa church na to, na kung kayo nakilala nyo na si Jesus Christ, na way maging katulad kay ni Andrew, na i-introduce nyo ang mga kapatid ninyo, ang mga ate ninyo, mga kuya nyo, yung mga bunso, mga anti, pati pa magulang, sino man na malapit sa inyo, gayahin natin si Andrew. Let's introduce our family members to Jesus. Minsan nag-iisip ka, minsan nagpipray ka, paano kaya makakakilala sa Panginoon? Paano kaya makakilala sa Panginoon yung mga mahal ko sa buhay? Yes, let's pray for it. Yes, you can ask help from us. But truth to be told, the best person to really bring them to Jesus Christ is you. Ikaw pa rin. Ikaw pa rin. Sa team mo ba si Andrew at saka si Peter hindi nag-aaway yan bilang magkapatid? Maramang nag-aaway din yan. Kahit tayo may mga mga kapatid din. Ito siguro may mga nakakaaway din tayo sa mga ating mga kapatid. Pero nababago ugali mo pag naboborn again ka. Kaya siguro ngayon, naborn again ka, nakilala mo na si Jesus Christ, may bawas-bawasan mo na yung pag-aaway mo sa mga kapatid mo. Lalo na kung hindi sila mga mana ng palataya. Dahil halimbawa, ayain mo sa church. Pwedeng sabihan ka pa niya na, ayain mo ko sa church, pero pangit na ugali mo. Kaya tuloy ikaw na mismo, hindi ka na nag a eh. Kasi alam mo, yun ang sasabihin. Alam mo, yun yung sasabihin. 
Pero pag narealize mo to ngayon, mula dito sa John chapter 1 verses 41 to 42, paano nakakilala si Peter? His brother Andrew introduced him to Jesus. Hindi siya na kontento, hindi siya hindi siya nagtagal ng sobrang tagal bago niya i-effort yung kapatid niya. Paano niya in-effort? Immediately. Immediately he went to his brother Simon and brought him to Jesus. Yung bang pag introduce ni Andrew kay Peter kay Jesus meant immediately eh naglingkod na agad si Peter kay Jesus? Hindi rin naman eh. Hindi rin naman eh, which you will find out later on. Pero at least, ando na yung desire kay Andrew. I will bring my brother. I will bring my siblings, my loved ones to Jesus. And everybody who desires the same thing, say Amen! Gano karami sa inyo dito na umaaten sa ating worship service at pati nakikinig ngayon sa message na to sa YouTube or on video. Eh may mga kapatid o mahal sa buhay na hindi pa nakakakilala kay Jesus Christ. Pakitaas nga ang kanang kamay. Pakitaas nga ang kanang kamay. Meron kayo mga kapatid, mahal sa buhay. Itaas, taas nyo pa dalawang kamay, lalo na kung ang dami. Kung marami, taas. Praise God. Ang dami, no? So pakisabi nyo sa inyong katabi. Gayahin natin si Andrew. Gayahin natin si Andrew. I-introduce natin ang mga kapatid natin, ang mga mahal natin sa buhay, sa Panginoon. At magsimula tayo sa paanong paraan? Bawasan na makipag-away sa kapatid. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Kung yan lang matandaan nyo ngayong gabi, pwede na tayo umuwi. Yung bawasan lang na makipag-away sa kapatid. Kung sa pumagitan lang noon, makita niya. May nagbago dito. Dati-dati, kung makasingil sa akin ng utang to, parang hindi ako kapatid. Dati-dati, kung awahin ako nito, eh, isinusumpa na ako kung ano-ano pa. Pero ba't ngayon, nag, nag-melo ka at you show a, a greater level of compassion, mas lalo mo na-express ang love mo, let them see. Let your siblings, let your relatives, I'd like to emphasize that very well, lalo na sa mga nariritong may mga kapatid, let your siblings see what Jesus is doing in your life. Introduce your siblings to Christ. At nung pinakilala ni Andrew, si Peter kay Jesus, isa pa na makikita natin sa eksenang ito, was that Jesus immediately saw Peter's potential and called him Cephas or Stone. Jesus immediately saw Peter's potential and called him Cephas or Stone. Meron naman tayong mapupulot ditong aral, lalo na bilang isang leader o naglilingkod sa ministry. Si Jesus ang galing makapag-spot unang pagkakilala pa lang niya na nakikita niya na agad ko ano ang potential nitong taong to. Pwede itong maging musician sa church, pwede itong maging uh, preacher, pwede maging teacher, pwede maging uh, part ng basketball team. Yung, meron siya agad nakikita dun sa tao. And that's something that many leaders, especially in ministry, should learn. Magkaroon ka ng discernment, magkaroon ka ng, uh, ng spiritual ability to see what is good and best in people. Hindi yung agad na nakikita natin kung ano yung pangit sa kanila. Makikita mo kung sino yung binago na ng Lord eh. Ang nakikita niya sa kapwa, kung ano yung maganda sa kanya. Hindi nakikita agad niya kung ano yung pangit sa kanya. That's what leaders do. They see something in this person that God can use. They can see something in this person that God can use. Kung yung iba ang nakikita lang yung suplada yan, masungit yan, kuriput yan, lasenggo yan, mabisyo yan, itsura pa nga lang pastor, mukhang adik na, mukhang mapapatay ito sa Pilipinas pag napauwi ngayon, kaya nga hindi muna na yung pinapauwi. Ang nakikita lang yung iba, puro pangit. Pero yung leader sa church, yung naglilingkod sa Panginoon, pag may ini-introduce sa kanya, ang nakikita niya, potential. Ang nakikita niya, what is good and beautiful and what is best in that person. Kindly say this to yourself. Gusto ko ganun ako. Kindly say that to yourself. Gusto ko ganun ako. Ano yun? Yung ang nakikita mo sa tao yung maganda. Hindi nakikita mo lagi sa tao yung pangit and everybody say, Amen. Amen. 
Di ba sa atin, napaka-prangka? Pangit mo. Yung walang pakundangan, diretsya agad. Hindi man lang paligoy-ligoy. Pangit mo. Yung ang nakikita agad at na, nabibikas, lumalabas mula sa kanyang puso, namumutawi sa kanyang bibig, ano sabi sa Bible? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. At nowadays, out of the abundance of the heart, people post. Eh, yun yung mga nakikita kung kanina at kung saan-saan. Pag-pray mo yan, mabago yung pagtingin mo sa tao. Gusto ko, Panginoon, maging ganun ako. Ang nakikita ko, yung maganda sa tao. Be like Jesus. Na unang pagkakita pa lang sa tao, nakikita na niya, Peter, you're Cephas. You're a stone. Jesus already prophetically declaring what Peter would become as one of the living stones by which the church would one day be established. Ang galing nung revelation na yan. Ang galing nung revelation na yan. Na unang pagkakita pa lang ng Panginoon kay Peter, nakita niya, niya agad, this person is a man, this person is a, uh, is a person I will use to do great and mighty things for the glory of the church. What else? Mula sa patuloy nating pag-aaral ng Biblia, especially other portions of Scripture, we will learn many, many more things about Peter. At ito yung magiging major focus ng ating mensahe ngayong gabi. Hindi lang kung paano na-meet ni Peter si Jesus, but more importantly, kung paano na natanggap yung kanyang calling. Everybody say with me this word, calling. Everybody say with me this word, calling. Madalas nating naririnig yan. May calling. May pagkatawag. Minsan hindi natin alam kung calling nga ba o kuliling lang, di ba? O may tuliling. Pero you've heard of this, yung calling. And Peter also, bukod sa he met Jesus, e eh dumating din yung araw kung kailan doon naman siya tinawag. Iba pa yung na-meet niya si Jesus for the first time in the book of John at iba naman yung pagkakataon na doon na siya tinawag. And here we will study how he was called by Jesus. How he was called by Jesus. Mark chapter 1 verses 16 to 20. Let's jump to the book of Mark uh, chapter 1 verses 16 to 20. And as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And then Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther from there, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the boat, mending their nets. And immediately he called them. And they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired servants and went after him. So, ito na yung eksena ng pagkatawag ni Peter and also Andrew and also later on, James and John. When, when we say calling, especially nowadays, Maray lang ibig sabihin natin any of the following. One, eto na yung tinatawag ka ng Panginoon or you're being called by God to accept Him as Lord and Savior. Bunga na marahil ng tinatawag ng the born again experience. Kaya for some people, pag sinasabi nila, parang eto na yung pagkatawag. Eto na yung calling ni Lord sa akin. What they really mean is, naboborn na again na sila, nagkakaroon sa ng born again experience, at nawawala na lahat ng hindrance para tanggapin niya si Jesus bilang Lord and Savior. For some people, ang ibig sabihin ng calling is salvation. Number two, for some people, ang ibig sabihin ng calling is perhaps a renewal of one's commitment to God. Kasi pwedeng tumanggap na kay Jesus before, pero may mga nangyari, may mga pinagdaanan, may mga pinaguhugutan, yung mga tipong nagi active sa church nung araw at pagkatapos ng isang malupit na eksena sa buhay, it will take another 15 years. Totoo yan, na May ganung mga tao. It will take another 15 years para magbalik loob sa Diyos. Iba naman, uh, at least mga 10 years lang, iba naman, at least mga 5 years lang, ewan ko kung may kilala kayong ganun. Diba? Kaya tuloy, hindi mo masabing, eto sila ngayon, tatanggap ulit, kasi tumanggap na eh. Ano yung nangyayari sa kanila? Nagbabalik loob sa Diyos. Kaya pakisabi nyo sa inyong katabi, parang ikaw lang, Brad. Diba? Pakisabi mo sa inyong katabi, parang, parang ikaw yung kanakwenta ni Pastor. Pagbabalik loob sa Diyos. Sometimes I would like to call that spiritual renewal. Sometimes I like to call that spiritual revival. Pero nonetheless, to some people, ayan na. 
tinatawag ka na ng Diyos. Ayan na yung calling ng Panginoon. Marahil it was through an experience, marahil because of a preaching, marahil because of a person, but you cannot deny it, you feel it, you're hearing it, God calling you to Him. Or, to others naman, it may mean this. Number three, a deeper commitment in ministry. A deeper commitment in ministry. Hindi naman nawala sa church mula nung tumanggap, masasabi mo naman may ministry din, either usher, worship team member, baka nga nagtuturo pa, pero alam mo yun na pwedeng nasa loob ka ng church pero sumasabay ka lang dun sa agos pero hindi ka nalulunod nito. Sumasabay ka lang dun sa agod pero hindi nagpe-penetrate dun sa puso mo yung mga nagaganap. Hindi natin masasabi na masamang tao, hindi rin natin masasabi na hindi siya sincere pero may ganun eh. May, may mga attempts ang ilang scholars to explain but may ganun mga phenomenon but just for the purposes of our argument or discussion for tonight is let's just accept the fact na may ganun talaga eh. Pero at some point in one's life, ayan na, yung calling. Again, pwedeng sa pumagitan ng experience. Perhaps nagkaroon ng trahedya sa buhay. Biglang nagka-realization. O hindi man nagkaroon na isang uh, mabigat na pagsubok, may preaching. Na yung particular preaching na yon, yung particular preacher na yon, ginamit ng Lord para tumagos sa kanyang puso yung mensahe. You've heard of this. You've probably experienced this yourself. Na bakit yung particular preaching na yon, parang tinutusok ang iyong puso, hinihiwa ito, tinatapias, at ang ending eh, naluluha ka at naluluhod at sumusuko sa Panginoon, leading you to a deeper commitment in ministry. That's one. And uh, probably, let's add another point. Number four. Yung iba naman, hindi lang ang calling ibig sabihin na a deeper commitment in ministry, but an actual acceptance of a unique gifting or function tulad ng pagpapastor. Na somehow, may naririnig ka, pero busog ka eh. Uh, nung araw may naririnig ka, pero alam mo, gutom ka lang noon. Pero bakit ngayon busog ka? Nakatulog ka naman ng mahimbing. Hindi lang naman dahil sa problema. Pero bakit ramdam na ramdam mo? Tinatawag kang magpastor. Kaya pakisabi niyo sa inyong katabi, pastor daw. <laughs> yung ganun yung, ganun yung ano ha, ganun yung boses, pastor daw. Pastor. Kasi iba minsan yun yung parang inaantay eh, yung parang boses na malalim na nanggagaling sa kuweba, kung saan man, o kaya parang isang matinding kidlat, pastor, pak! Yung ganyan, para masabi niyang, Eh, yun na nga talaga yung calling. You know, there's a verse in the Bible that says in the Old Testament, akala nila, the voice of God was in the earthquake, the voice of God was in the thunder and lightning. Sometimes you think it was all of these drama. When all in all, sabi, the voice of God was in this, was a still, small voice. Hindi mo masabi kung paano ka talaga kakausapin ng Panginoon para sa ganyang klaseng mga pagkatawag. Pastor ka pala. Propeta ka pala. Evangelist ka pala. Uh, ikaw pala'y gagamitin ng Lord to do great and mighty things. A missionary. May mga ganong mga unique callings. At ito ngayon si Peter was about to experience his calling. Was about to experience how God was calling him into ministry. And uh, he was called by God together with other fishermen. Yun nga, yung kapatid si Andrew, tapos si James, at yung kapatid naman doon na si John. But later on, as we proceed, makikita natin in another part of the New Testament, specifically in the book of Luke, yung mas detalyadong kwento ng kanyang pagkatawag. Alam nyo kasi yung buhay ni Yesu Cristo, dinis ka sa apat na Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And in another message, yan lang ang tututukan natin. Ano ba yung pagkakatulad nila? Ano ba yung dahilan? But apat sila, abangan nyo yung message about the Gospels. But for tonight, let's go to the book of Luke para mas lalo natin makita yung details ng pagkatawag ni Peter. Luke chapter 5 verses 1 to 11. Luke chapter 5 verses 1 to 11. Now it happened that while Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, Sea of Galilee, with the people crowding all around him and listening to the word of God, that he saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake. 
but the fishermen had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little distance from the shore. And he sat down and began teaching the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon Peter, Put out into the deep water and lower your nets for a catch of fish. Simon replied, Master, we worked hard all night to the point of exhaustion and caught nothing in our nets. But at your word, I will do as you say and lower the nets again. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were at the point of breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats with fish so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all his companions were completely astounded at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon Peter. Jesus said to Simon, have no fear. From now on, you will be catching men. After they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him, becoming his disciples, believing and trusting in him and following his example. Wow. From these verses, we learn a lot of beautiful things concerning paano ba, tina, paano ba tinawag ng Diyos si Peter. And also, probably you can relate kung paano rin kayo tinatawag, tinawag ng Panginoon o tatawagi ng Panginoon. Go back, no? Doon sa Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 2. Now, it happened that while Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, Sea of Galilee, with the people crowding all around them and listening to the word of God, that he saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake. But the fishermen had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. Ano matututunan natin dyan sa pagtawag ng Diyos sa tao? No matter how busy Jesus was, he always saw people he would call. No matter how busy Jesus was, he always saw people he would call. Kung babalikan niyo yung kwento, busy siya. He was preaching. He was actually doing ministry. Hinan niyo ulit, ano? Luke 5, 1 to 2. Now, it happened that while Jesus was standing by the lake of Genazareth, Sea of Galilee, with the people crowding all around him and listening to the word of God, that he saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake, but the fishermen had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. You know, ako relate na relate ako dito eh, kasi minsan pagkatapos ng worship service natin, halimbawa, mamaya, I make it an effort na dun sa bandang labas, makamaya ko man lahat ng mga tao na lumalabas. At lahat ng kinakamayan ko, syempre, I would uh, shake hands with them as sincerely as possible. Minsan, may humihinto pa saglit, either para makipag-usap pa o magtanong o ganyan. Pero meron at meron mga tao na kahit habang ako may kinakausap, may kinakamayan, hindi pwedeng hindi ko siya matatanaw. Hindi pwedeng hindi siya ipatatanaw sa akin ng Panginoon. Kahit hindi ko man yun matawag, hahabulin ko later on yun doon sa baba o baka sasend ko pa ng message mamaya sa social media because the Lord enabled me to see Him. The Lord enabled me to have some kind of feeling for this particular person that was probably unique to that particular person's calling in the Lord. At ganun si Jesus Christ. Kahit gano'n siya ka-busy, he saw people. Kahit gano'n siya ka-busy, he saw people. Many things you can learn from this. Number one, kahit gano'n ka dami ng nangyayari sa planeta, may time si Lord para sa'yo. Dami-daming tao, isipin mo. Billions of people in the planet. E Diyos nga siya at dahil Diyos siya, hindi niya tayo katulad. Tayo may limitation tayo sa kapasidad natin kung sino yung ating kayang ma-entertain. Pero dahil siya ay Diyos, lagi siyang may time para sa'yo. Hindi ba yan na rinereklamo lagi ng maraming mga in a relationship? Wala ka ng time. Diba? Madalas dyan, nag-uumpisa ang mga away. Hindi mo na ako tinitext tulad ng dati. Dati, bawat kilos, bawat galaw mo, paglabas mo ng pintuan, nasa labas na ako. Di ba ganun yung iba? O kaya, okay, naririto na, ganyan. 
O kaya eh, may mga date pa, bakit nung nag-asawa na, eh wala na mga date-date, lagi na lang nagpapaluto. Hindi mo na doon maintindihan, ikaw ba'y pinakasalan para mag asawa o para maging yaya? Kasi nung bago ka pinakasalan, ang ganda ng katawan mo eh. Ba't ba naman ngayon mukhang yaya na rin talaga ang katawan mo? Kaya baka nako-confuse na asawa mo. Asawa, yaya. Asawa, yaya. Kaya tuloy minsan may mga babae at kahit pa lalaki na nagre sa mga kapartner nila, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband or wife, wala ka ng time. Pakisabi niyo yun sa inyong katabi, lalo na kung may asawa o katabi mo, asawa mo, oh, makinig ka kay pastor. Kung katabi niyo, asawa niyo, oh, nari, makinig, makinig ka, wala ka ng time. Everybody say that with me. Wala ka ng time. May lesson dun ha? Always have time for people you love. Always have time for your husband, for your wife. Always have quality time for your boyfriend, your girlfriend. Always have time for your parents, for your siblings. Kaya yun, namamanage yun. And what a wonderful feeling it is. Na kung let's say ikaw yung tao na api dyan sa department na yan. Yung may hugot ka dyan kasi parang may mga tao, they don't give you time. May mga tao hindi nakikinig sa iyo. At sa kanya iba hindi lang yung time, eh. yung pag andya diyan, andya diyan. Minsan kinaka kinakausap mo, ang sarap-sarap ng emote mo. Hindi pa nakikinig. Oh, oh. Marami na sana na sa ganyan. I remember one time may nakikitira sa bahay ko. Tapos eto yung kama, I was on this other side. Sa kausap niya yung girlfriend niya. Eh yung girlfriend niya talaga napaka daldakinan nun, yung daldal talaga nun. Tapos, nakapatong yung cellphone dito, umaabot yata ng halos isang oras na. Noong umpisa, nakikita ko eh, oh, 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 oh. oh namin, tulog na. Ay, uy, ising ka. May sasalita pa yung girlfriend mo. Tapos <laughs> yung girlfriend niya, sa sobrang lakas ang boss, mga rinig mo na, ay, alam mo siya, ay, ganyan. Ibig sabihin, hindi nakikinig, hindi binibigyan ng ay, kaya may mga tao, may mga nakikinig ngayon, biktima ng ganyan. May mga taong gumawa na niyan sa inyo. Yung hindi ka binibigyan ng quality time. And everybody say, Amen! Amen! Ito huh? na mamasasabi ko sa marami sa inyong api dyan. Si Jesus will always give you time. Jesus will always give you time. If you think no one else hears, no one else sees, but Jesus will always see the people He will always call. Jesus will always see the people He will always call. Kaya at gano, kabisis ni Jesus yung panahon na yun, nagpipreach na siya and everything, but He saw the boat of Peter. He saw Peter. And he knew there was something that Peter can do and he will do great things. And when the time came, Jesus eventually realized this in the life of Peter, that Jesus gives people whom he is calling opportunities to serve. In the life of Peter, we see this, that Jesus gives people whom he is calling opportunities to serve. You see this in the next part of the verse. Luke chapter 5, verse 3. Luke chapter 5, verse 3 says, He got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little distance from the shore. And he sat down and began teaching the crowds from the boat. So, nagpipreach na siya Pero he wanted Peter to have a part in that ministry. Kaya ano ginawa ni Jesus kay Peter? Sabi niya, Pwede ko ba magamit siyang ano mo, yung boat mo? At mula doon sa boat mo, yun yung parang stage, dun siya magpipreach. Ano na ba siya? Apostle? Ano ba na ba siya? Disciple? Di ba? Pero dahil nakita early on ni Jesus Christ that He had potential, kanya bigyan natin na opportunity to serve to. May bangka eh, gamitin natin para ma-realize niya na pwede siyang magamit sa ministry. And from that, I would like you to understand kung bakit ganyan tayo sa church na to. Dito sa church natin, pag meron tayong nabalitaan, maganda boses, hindi na natin pinatatagal agad. Pinapasabihan na natin at pinapabison, pwede ba next week kumantayan? 
Eh, pastor, kaka-attend lang ng church. Eh, kahit na. Eh, ngayon lang dumating ang magandang boses. Matagal na tayo nagtiti sa mga pangit na boses sa mga tao dito. So, eh, eh, eh padala na ng Panginoon yan. Pakakawalan pa ba natin? Tapos sabi lang, eh, pastor, hindi po ba yan eh? Padadaanin muna natin sa mahabang seminar. Kung ano pa. Eh, ayaan mo na habang nagsiseminar, eh, kumakanta na. Eh, baka sa haba ng seminar na yun, bago matapos, eh, nawala na ng trabaho dito yan at hindi na natin napakinabangan. That explains why in our church, pag may nakita ka o oh, nagigita, pag-gitarahin na yan. Kung makapakantain na yan. Masarap magluto, paglutuin na yan. Maraming pera, pag-donatein na yan. <laughs> diba? Nakikita mo, meron tong talent, meron tong kakayanan. Huwag na patagalin. Give him an opportunity to serve. Kasi gano'n ang ginawa ni Jesus Christ kay Peter. Gano'n ang ginawa ni Jesus Christ kay Peter. Bigyan mo na ng opportunity. Sabi ni Jesus, paupo dito sa ano bangka. Ang totoo, pwede namang hindi eh. Kasi nauna na nagpipreach siya, wala naman siya sa bangka eh. Pero gusto niya iparamdam kay Peter, tingnan mo may silbi yung bangka mo. Hindi lang yan pang ano, pang pangingisda o pagbibusiness. Magagamit pa sa ministry. Magagamit pa sa ministry. Kaya kahit ito sa ating church, oh may kotse pala yan. Oh, baka willing ka, pagamit yung kotse mo, maging part ka ng transportation ministry. Oh, baka willing ka, yung uh, laptop mo, Hindi naman pala masyado nagagamit sa bahay, natatapakan lang ng anak mo, e baka pwedeng magamit yan para sa gawain ng Panginoon. Ganon talaga ang mga pastor, ganon talaga ang mga lingkod ng Diyos. Gusto, gusto niyang bigyan kayo ng pagkakataon na maglingkod sa God. Hindi ka tinitake advantage, hindi ka inaabuso, pero yun ay ginawa rin ni Jesus kay Peter kasi yun ay privilege that you're being given the opportunity to serve. Number three, Jesus understands from this story, we see that Jesus understands what we need and will test us if we will trust and obey. From the story of Peter and how he was called, you will see how Jesus understands what we need and will test us if we will trust and obey. You find this in Luke chapter 5 verses 4 to 5. Luke chapter 5 verses 4 to 5. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon Peter, Put out into the deep water and lower your nets for a catch of fish. Simon replied, Master, we worked hard all night to the point of exhaustion and caught nothing in our nets. But at your word, I will do as you say and lower the nets again. From here you will see na ang mga taong tinatawag ng Diyos para maglingkod sa Kanya. Pusibling dumaan sa mga mabibigat na pagsubok sa buhay. Dahil doon sa mga mabibigat na pagsubok sa buhay, e doon ka matututo na magtiwala at sumunod sa Diyos. May mga araw naman eh, na pag nangingisda sila Peter, maraming huli. Pero bakit nung particular day na yun, wala daw mahuli-huli. Ano nga ba ang sabi doon? Verse 5, Simon replied, Master, we worked hard all night at the point of Exhaustion. Sino sa inyo naranasan yung ganyan? Yung trabaho ka ng trabaho, pagod ka na, ng, pagod na pagod ka na, pero parang wala pa rin nangyayari. Sino sa inyo naranasan na yan? Apply ng apply. Minsan may nagsabi sa akin, naka 1,000 applications na po ako online, pero wala pa rin approval. Sino sa inyo naranasan ng uh, mag-apply ng lisensya? At hindi po masa, minsan, bumagsak twice. Iba nga, may kilala ko, bumagsak yata ng sampung beses. And all of these things, you know, put some kind of frustration in your heart. Kano karami sa inyo nasa sales na lahat na ng pagkwentuhan, lahat na ng mamulaklak na salitab, ginamit mo para bumili ng kondo, ng lote, ng kabaong, ang kusino man ang mga tinitindahan mo. Pero zero pa rin, all that's pa rin. All of us face those dry seasons in life. All of us face those very difficult and frustrating moments in our lives. Areas of our lives that really matter, that affects us when we go to sleep. Minsan nga hindi ka pa makatulog kasi iniisip mo yun. Kaya nga minsan nagiging bugnutin ka kung bakit ka masungit sa asawa mo, sa anak mo, kung kanikanino mga tao. Kasi stress na stress ka na ng frustration na ito. Peter had the same. At the moment when he was being called, kasi nung mga oras na yun, eh dun din mag-glorify ang Diyos. Kung sa kalagitnaan ng matinding pagsubok sa buhay, you will still trust and obey the Lord. You will still trust and obey the Lord. 
Ako pang may mga nakakounselan at may mga bigat na pagsubok sa buhay, pagkatapos ko pakinggan, bigyan ng anumang payo na akma, ang dulo naman pa rin lagi nun, eh, sasabihin kong, pag-pray natin yan. Ang dulo pa rin naman lagi, eh, pag-pray natin yan. At minsan na rin naman naranasan ko na may nagsabi sa akin na may loso po pa, eh, pastor, puro na lang pray, eh, wala na ba ng mga gawa, prayer lang ba talaga? Naka-encounter na ako ng ganyan. Naka-encounter na ako ng ganyan. Baka minsan asawa niya, nasabihan niya na ng ganyan kasi tinuro natin eh. Pag may mabigat na problema, sabihin mo sa asawa mo, pag-pray natin yan. At naranasan niyo masabihan na niyo ng mga asawa, puro na lang pray, wala na ba tayo pwedeng gawin, kundi pray na lang talaga ng pray. At yan ang sakit ng mga may hihina ang pananampalataya o walang pananampalataya sa Diyos, hindi sila nagtitiwala sa Kanya. At lalo tuloy, hindi yun susunod sa Kanya. Si Peter, meron din siyang ano eh, yung kumbaga parang kahinaan dito. And later on, as we continue to study his life, you will see that even great men fail. Even great men of God failed not only once, but sometimes, many times. But here you see also his weakness in Luke chapter 5, verse 45. Sabi niya doon, When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon Peter, Put out into the deep water and lower your nets for a catch of fish. May sinasabi ang Panginoon sa kanya. Kasi pag tinatawag ka ng Lord, mangungusap ang Lord sa iyo eh. Mangungusap ang Panginoon sa iyo eh. So ito na, may sinasabi ang Panginoon sa kanya, pero ando dun yung pagkatao. Sabi sa verse 5, Simon replied, Master, we worked hard all night to the point of exhaustion and caught nothing in our nets. Naglalaban sa utak. Kung susunod ba talaga siya sa Panginoon. Naririnig na niya yung tinig ng Diyos. Eh. Alam na niya yung pinagagawa ng Panginoon. Eh. Pero naglalaban sa utak niya even tonight as I speak. There are some of you who can relate to this. Alam mo na yung dapat mong gawin pero naglalaban dito. Naglala- Naririnig mo na pero naglalaban dito kung susunod ka. Pero buti na lang sa panahon na to. Ano sabi ni Peter sa verse 5? Simon Peter replied, Master, we worked hard all night to the point of exhaustion and caught nothing in our nets. But at your word, I will. I will do as you say and lower the nets again. This is one of his first shining moments. Ito yung mga unang mga pagkakataon sa buhay at pananampalatayan ni Peter na masasabi mong winner ka dyan, Brad. Na kahit nasusubo ka, ang ending pa rin eh, ginawa mo yung tama. Sumunod ka sa pinagagawa ng Panginoon. And here you will learn another lesson from the life of Peter. That Jesus proved to them that when we trust and obey, blessings overflow. Jesus proved to Peter, Jesus proved to them that when we trust and obey the Lord, when He speaks to us, when He is calling us, blessings will always overflow. For here you see Luke chapter 5, 6 to 7. When they had done this, yung pinagagawa ni Jesus, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were at the point of breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats with fish so that they began to sink. Grabe. Totoo pala na pag sumunod ka sa Panginoon, hindi ka lang pagpapalain, kundi ito'y magiging siksik, liglig, at tumaapaw. Malulunod ka, mag-overflow, ma-overwhelm ka sa blessings ng Panginoon. I could really relate to this. Last night, I was sharing this story to a group of our leaders in church that like to share the story once again to those who's listening to this message. Dahil in connection to our message tonight. Yung pag nasusubok ang buhay mo, pero naririnig mo yung tinig ng Diyos, pero kahit nagsastruggle ka sa utak mo, pinili mo pa rin magtiwala at sumunod, talagang papatunayan sa'yo ng Panginoon. You will never regret it. And you will see that everyone who trusts and obeys God, He will see in His life blessings overflow. You know, I was at the point of giving up becoming a pastor of a church way back in 2000, uh, 2008. You were attempting to start a church mula 2006 to 2008 in Makati, in the Philippines. Noong umpisa, ganda. Ganang nangyayari. Pero mga tao, mahilig lang umaten, pero hindi naman nagbibigay, hindi naman nagsusupport. 
Kaya dumating kami sa point na wala pa halos dalawa, tatlong taon, kinailangan isara yung simbahan. Only simply because of lack of funding. And I really felt like a failure at that time. I felt na parang tapos na ako sa pagkatawag ng Diyos para magpastor ng isang church. But I knew that in spite of how tragic and sad that time was, hindi pa tapos ang Panginoon sa akin. So I kept on worshiping God. Uh, we, together with a few musicians that were with me, nag-record kami ng isang worship album. At habang kami nagpapabalik-balik sa recording studio in the Philippines to, in the Philippines, eh, every now and then ako'y na, nagpapahinga, tapos matutulog, babalik sa recording studio, magpapahinga, matutulog. In one of those moments, na naginip ako, at habang ako'y na, na, na naginip, in one of those resting periods, na naginip ako na nagpipreach ako sa Dubai. Na naginip ako, nagpipreach ako sa Dubai. Literally, there was like a pastor who was saying, Pastor Roman, welcome to Dubai, and uh, ito yung preaching mo, and so on. Kaya ramdam na ramdam ko pagkagising ko, nangungusap ba ang Diyos sa akin? Tinatawag ba niya ako para pumunta ng Dubai, a place that I've never been? A place that I knew at that time na wala naman akong kilala dito sa lugar na ito. walang paraan para makarating. Kakasara nga lang ng aking simbahan. I felt like a failure. It was like one of the lowest moments of my life. But then I felt nangungusap ang Panginoon. He was telling me to lower the net. He was telling me like he was telling Peter, makinig ka sa akin, makinig ka sa akin. Iano mo ulit yung ano... Yung net mo. God was telling me, go to this place. Mas naglalaban sa utak ko yung papano, papano gastos, papano yung detalye, visa, wala akong kilala, so kami and, and many times, when we're being called by God, God is speaking to us, ganun tayo. Nakikipaglaban tayo sa detalye sa Diyos. Nakikipaglaban tayo sa mga bagay na akala nating imposible. Forgetting that nothing is impossible with God. that nothing is impossible with God. Surprises of all surprises, bago kami nakarating sa Dubai, ako at yung assistant pastor natin ngayon, si Jepoy, we were invited to speak in Hong Kong. At pagdating namin muna sa Hong Kong, nakapag-preach ako sa isang kongregasyon na wala pang trentang tao na puro mga kasambahay. At nagulat ako. Dahil habang nagpipreach ako, kumakanta, lumuluha, overwhelmed na ako eh. Kasi ano yung backstory? I just closed the church. I felt my ministry was over. Pero ito, binibigyan pa ako ng chance ng Lord na mag-preach in another country. I was obeying God. I was lowering the net. Matapos ang ano, worship service, tinapitan ako ng mga leader ng church. Church na puro katulong ang laman. nag give at ang love it eh, halos 100,000 pesos in Hong Kong dollars at that time. Ano ba namang hindi ka maluluha lalo? Umuiyak na ako eh. Pero nasipon pa ako ng todo-todo pagkatapos eh. Pag ganun kalaki pala na love gift sa'yo, nasisipon ka pa na kasunod. Kasi hindi ko ini-expect yun eh. Hindi ko ini-expect yun eh. no mga panahon na yun, happy na ako na nakapag Hong Kong. Happy na ako na nare-revive ulit ako in ministry. I was giving the chance to serve God. May bonus pa pala ang Panginoon. Doon pa lang pinatunayan na niya, you can never outgive God. You can never out-obey God. You can never out-commit God. You trust and obey? God will prove to you. God will prove to you that blessings will always overflow. At sa akala mong tapos na yung kwento doon, eh syempre, ano ba yung napaniginipan? Ano ba yung pagkatawag? Pumunta ng Dubai. Ano ba ang sinagot ng Hong Kong trip na yon? Yung tanong ko, Papano gastos? Papano plane ticket? Papano yung visa? Kasi by that time, naka-research na ako eh. But by that time, may na-contact na ako na pwede kong pagbila ng visa. Yung 100,000 pesos din, yun sumakto. Para ako at yung assistant pastor natin ngayon, si Pastor Jepo, ay eh, makarating. Tag-35,000 pesos yata yung plane ticket at that time. Tapos eh, yung pang-visa at syempre konting pocket money. Nasa aeroplano kami, we took Qatar Airways. Tanong ng tanong sa akin si Pastor Jepo, sabi niya, eh sino ba kuya pupuntaan natin? Ano mga, ko, bahala na, basta pinapunta tayo ni Lord. Pagdating doon, baka may tricycle, sakay tayo, tapos diretso kung saan. Ganon na ganon talaga yun. Nakasakay kami sa aeroplano, la-landing kami, hindi na alam kung sino mong susundo sa amin doon sa Terminal 1 eh. Bumakas yung Terminal 1 na yan, walang sumundo sa amin. 
Pagbukas ng Terminal 1 na, na nalaman namin at that time, yung brother pala niya, nagtatrabaho sa tapat, yung Lemeridian Hotel. Pero hindi naman din namin pwede tiran, binisita lang namin. Pero hindi natapos yung araw na yun, may natiran kami. Hindi natapos yung araw na yun, may namit kami. At yung namit namin yun, dinala kami sa isang church at kumalat like a virus yung balita that someone like me was in Dubai. And what I never thought would happen in that two months, God uh, promoted us, God uh, exposed us to the churches, natapos ang dalawang buwan eh, halos isang daang simbahan yung napag-preachan ko. Ang isang biyernes, nagpipreach ako ng dalawa sa umaga, nagpipreach ako dalawa sa hapon, nagpipreach ako sa gabi. Mula sa Abu Dhabi, Dubai, all the way to Fujaira. People we've never met were so excited and enthusiastic to meet us. Nagdala ko ng konting CDs kasi nga nag-record ako ng album eh. Nagdala ko ng 50. Ang feeling ko sa dalawang buwan, wala naman nakakilala sa akin. Baka pahirap pang pabarang bago maubos. Natapos ang uh, dalawang linggo, ubus na yung CD. Natapos yung dalawang linggo, naubos yung CD. Eh syempre na alam kong 50, ano lang yun, 50 CDs, tinasan ko yung presyo at sinabi ko na eti pang mission, yun naman talaga totoo, pang ministry. Kaya sa panahon na pinipirata na ang mga CD, Tinanggap ng mga tao, binili na yung mga CD natin ng 60 to 70 dirhams per piece. Aba, nung nakita ko sa ikalawang linggong binibili pala ito, tumawag ako sa Pilipinas at ang sabi ko dun sa isang musician ko, dadaling kita dito, pero magdala ka ng isang libong CDs. <laughs> sa isang linggo nag-speak kami, unang linggo namin nag-preach, I was surprised and this is to the glory of God. This is to the glory of God. The first week that I preached here, nag-preach ako ng dalawa sa umaga, nag-preach ako ng dalawa sa hapon, nag-preach ako sa gabi, bumili ng mga CDs. Ang ending namin nung gabi, meron kaming 10 to 15,000 dirhams. Unang linggo parang, Ika, parang gusto kong magtagal sa bansang ito. Parang may potensya lang bansang ito. What is that? You were catching fish and the nets were breaking to the point that it was sinking. Alam mo ba yun nung sumunod ka sa Lord? Alam mo ba yun nung pupunta ka dito sa Dubai? Hindi ko naman alam yun eh. Ang alam ko lang eh, sabi ng Lord, tinatawag niya ako, pumunta ako, bahala siya. Kaya yung musician namin, nakaipon kami ng sapat na love gift, binili ko naman ng plane ticket niya, binili ko ng visa niya, at yung isang libong CD, ilinipad niya papunta dito. Praise the Lord! Pagdating na pagdating niya dun sa, sa airport, sabi ko, nasa na isang libong CD, nakumpis ka pala ng, ano, ng pulis. Yung kasing pangatlong musician ko, na linipad ko, in check, hindi ko alam na ang itsura ng mga smuggler dito, puro in check pala lahat. Ay. Kasi sabi ko sa kanya, huwag kang magdala ng damit. Dito na lang tayo bibil ng damit. Tak, napaka-innocente namin noon. 2009 yan eh. Sabi ko, takpan mo yung, yung CD sa taas ng puro t-shirt as if hindi naman dadaan sa x-ray iyon. <laughs> Nadaan doon sa x-ray. Nadaan doon sa x-ray. Isang libong Christian CD. Lahat pa yun, hindi mo makakailang akin dahil puro mukha ko na doon sa harap ano si Hindi. Sabi nung ano, what is it kanya? Kinumpis ka? Eh di ang takot namin nun kasi bagong-bago lang kami dito. Bali ikatlong linggo lang namin yun. Ko Panginoon, masyado ba kami naging sakim? Masyado ba kami naging greedy? Na, na ano pa yun, patawarin niyo po kami. <laughs> kasi iniisip ko ba, makakulong pa kami ng mga orts sa inyo. Isang beses na doon kami nakatira doon sa bahay na tinitira namin. Ang tagal ko sa banyo, nandun ako sa bathtub. Naka, siguro mga isang oh, Panginoon pa, paano po ba mangyayari po sa amin dito? Panginoon, ayoko po makulong. <laughs> Alam kong pinadala niyo po kami dito at yung isang libong CD nga hindi masasayang niya. Eh hindi pa bayad yun eh, consignment yun eh doon sa recording company. Pero hindi ko na inisip. Eh inisip ko, Lord, sana kami makulong. Sana huwag mangyayari hindi maganda. Ganyan. Nagawa ng paraan. Napuntahan namin yung pinaka-head ng customs ng buong Dubai. Yung pinaka-head, no, di lokal yun. So pagpasok namin doon sa opisina, laki ng opisina niya eh, parang ganito kalaki. Mula doon sa dulo, doon magagaling dito yung table niya. Walang ibang tao kundi siya, kundi takot na takot kami kung papasok. Pagdating namin sa harapan, nag-decide ako hindi ako magsisinungaling. Sasabihin ko talaga totoo. Sabi niya, Why you have, uh, what are these cities? Uh, Filipino, uh, Christian CDs. Kasi, so, eh, syempre, bag, dininay ko pa, baka yun na yan, no? malaman din. 
for whom? For uh, Filipino friends. Why so many? I have many friends. <laughs> Gumaan ng pagka-Joey De Leon ko ng mga oras. Ang bilis talaga nung sabi ko, I have many friends. Okay. <laughs> sabi niya. Tapos medyo galit. Sabi niya, you go and sit there at the back. You sit there at the back. Tapos nabas niya yung jaryo niya, nag-chash siya. Siguro mga 15 minutes yun. Ganun siya. <laughs> sabi nung nagdala na musician ko yung in-check, yung mukhang smuggler. Sabi niya, Kuya, bakit? Manahimik ka dyan. Bakit mag- magsalita dyan? Baka magalit sa atin. Pray na lang tayo. Takot-takot talaga kami kasi baka mairita sa amin, hindi ko alam. Pero alam ko, ba't ako nandi dito? Ba't kami nandu doon? Ba't may ganong klaseng CD? Hindi naman para pag kami. Hindi. Para sa ministry lahat yun, sa paggagawa ng Panginoon. Kaya alam kong hindi kami pababayaan ng Lord. Nagtiwala ako, sumunod ako eh. After 15 minutes, he dropped his newspaper, he dropped his tea, he called us, come here. You tell them, give this to you. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Takbo tayo. Nabalik sa amin ang isang libong CDs. Praise the Lord. Balakpakan natin ang Panginoon. And the next two months, yung 100 churches na yun sa UAE, binili yun lahat at 70 dirhams each. Pag dumadating yung ikatatlong linggo na yung mga churches, wala pa masyadong pera kasi hindi pa sweldo, kukunin pa rin nila at sasabihin nila, Pastor, pabalikan nyo na lang ito sa katapusan kasi ngayon wala pang pera tao pero consider this sold. So bukod pa sa linalabgipan kami, bukod sa binibili na yung mga CDs, you know what happened to us? By the time that I returned to the Philippines, kung paano ko nakarating dito, paano ko nakarating dito, isa eh, pa magitan ng 100,000 love gift ng mga katulong sa Hong Kong, bumalik ako sa Pilipinas, nasyak ako with about a million to 500,000 pesos that later nagamit namin sa ministry. Talk about obeying God. Talk about obeying God. When the Lord said to Peter, the Lord said to Peter, you throw your net. Lord, ginawa na namin magdamag, napagod kami, pero sige na nga, susunod ako. And then when he obeyed, pinatunayan ng Panginoon sa kanya, tingnan mo pag susunod ka. Look at what happened in Luke 5, 6-7. Look again. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were at the point of breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats with fish so that they began to sick. Relate na relate ako dito. Dumating kami dito dahil tinawag kami ng Panginoon. Dalawa lang kami ni Jepoy. Kulang kami. Grabe yung nangyayari. Tinawag ko yung tulong nung aking isang musician. Nung kinulang pa yung in-check na mukhang smuggler, eh pinatawag ko naman yung isa na mukha ng artista. Nagtiyak na ako na yung susunod eh, hindi magkakaproblema. And as one band and was one team, we partnered together and we did what God called us to do. Fast forward, yun ang rason kung bakit nakapag-start ang Rise Up Church dito sa Dubai. Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Fast forward, yun ang rason ba't nakapag-start ang Rise Up Church dito sa Dubai. It was a calling from the Lord. And how God provided was as miraculous as when He said to Peter, you throw your net into the sea. You just throw your net into the sea. Tonight, there are some of you, yan ang mensahe ng Panginoon sa iyong buhay. You throw your net into the sea. And let the Lord prove to you that when you trust and obey, blessings overflow. Number five, trusting and obeying Jesus during times of trials allows us to experience God's grace and mercy, power and miracles, as well as love, joy, and peace. Trusting and obeying Jesus during times of trials allows us to experience God's grace and mercy, power and miracles, as well as love, joy, and peace. Yan yung tinatawag na experiencing God. Yan yung tinatawag na encountering God. Yung experiencing God, nararanasan natin yan ng lubusan sa mga panahon na hinanghina tayo, sa mga panahon na tayo nasusubukan kasi wala ka ng pride eh. Dapat kasi ang mangyari sa atin, maging broken before the Lord. Ang dapat mangyari sa atin, wala nang ibang maitaas kundi si Jesus lamang. 
ang dapat mangyari sa atin na kahit mabigat yung pagsubok sa buhay, hindi ka pa rin tumitigil sa pagsamba at pag-worship sa Panginoon. If there are two important lessons I've always learned from my mother, kay Mam Ping, which I share to many of our people. Lagi niya sinasabi sa amin mula pagkabata hanggang ngayon na pastor na kami na aking kapatid. Lesson number one, huwag magyayabang. Lesson number two, lagi mag-worship. And that is the same lesson that Jesus is teaching to his disciples. The lesson he was teaching to Peter when he was calling him into ministry. Kasi alam niya magiging problema ni Peter to in the future eh. Because as much as Peter would later become one of the greatest leaders of Christianity, eh, nasa sa kanya rin na isa sa trait ng maraming mga leader. Ma pride, ma ego, impulsive, and all of that. Kinailangan maging broken si Peter para niya ma-realize. And this is one of the first experiences that Peter had that he was being made broken by the Lord. Luke chapter 5, 8 to 10 says, But when Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all his companions were completely astounded at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon Peter. Jesus said to Simon, Have no fear, from now on you will be catching men. Kanina nabanggit ko sa aking example how God financially blessed us surprisingly when we obeyed. Pero sa totoo lang, bonus na lang sa akin yung blessing na yun. Kinailangan ko lang i-share yun kasi para makita nyo na walang-wala kami pero pinakita ng Lord kahit wala ka, pag sumunod ka, magkakaroon ka. At pinakita sa amin ng Panginoon na kung susunod ka sa mga panahon na kailangan ka sumunod sa Kanya, ang Panginoon lahi ka susupresahin, ang ibibigay sa iyo ay eh, higit pa do sa inaakala mo. Ang ibibigay sa higit pa do sa inaakala mo. Pero ang pinag-uusapan din kasi dito sa kwento ni Peter, hindi lang naman yung, yung fish as fish eh. Ang pinag-uusapan dito yung gagamitin siya ng Lord to become fishers of men. Gagamitin siya ng Panginoon to become fishers of men. Kaya para sa amin ni Pastor Jeff, po, no kami nakarating dito sa Middle East, bonus na lang yung financial blessing. It was really about winning thousands of souls for the Lord, reviving hundreds of churches, helping many pastors and leaders to once again have this fire to serve God. That was in itself the blessing. That was in itself the blessing. Kasi minsan, ang tao, sa totoo lang, Laging ang blessing, pera-pera lang eh. Malungkot ang buhay ngayon, madali ma-explain why. Wala kang pera, no? May mga taong ganun, ang dali mo na ma-explain, ba't ganyan ngayon, walang pera yan. Kailangan ba lagi na nadidefine ang pagkatao natin, ang joy na lumalabas sa ating mukha, kasi lang dahil sa pera? Uh, marriages, kaya minsan hindi rin nagsosurvive dito sa Middle East, dahil sa issue ng pera-pera. Nagkasubukan dun. Na issue yon so wala nang lablab. Akala ko ba wala nang lablab lab dito, pera pera usapan dito. May mga dyan nasisira kahit sa mga ministries, nasisira sa mga churches. Don't let money define your destiny. Don't let money, the presence or the absence of it, define how happy you are with your life. Dahil ang tao na susunod sa Panginoon, susundan siya ng pera. Ang taong susunod sa Panginoon, susundan siya ng pera. I ano nyo nga yan? I-hashtag nyo yan. Hashtag. Ang taong susunod sa Panginoon, susundan ng pera. Sunod sa Panginoon, susundan ng pera. Yung tao na ang sinusundan ng pera, yan ang nagkaka, nagkaka-complicate ang life. Hindi si Lord ang sinusunod eh. Ang sinusunod, pera. You follow the Lord and God will prove to you that you will always experience overflowing blessings from God. At ano ba yung overflowing blessing? Hindi lang pera yun. Tingnan mo dito, sabi sa verse 5. Dito sa point number 5. Trusting and obeying Jesus during times of trials allow us to experience God's grace and mercy, power and miracles, as well as love, joy, and peace. Eh, mga taon, daming pera. Hindi makatulog ng mahimbing. Kasi baka patayin siya ng asawa niya. Kasi may insurance pala. <laughs> eh, mga tao, hindi mahimbing ang tulog. Kasi hindi siya tiyak 
kung faithful o loyal sa kanya yung asawa niya. Yung mawala lang saglit, kinakabahang ka na, baka ayan na naman, may ginagawa na namang kalukuhan. Ang hirap mabuhay ng walang kapayapaan. ba? Diba? Kaya nga sabi nila, minsan mabuti na rin na hindi gwapo yung asawa. Minsan maganda na rin, mabuti na hindi maganda yung asawa. Walang mahabol. Pero minsan pag masyadong good looking, minsan pag masyadong maganda, ganda katawan, Ito may iba sa inyo, happy na na yung katawan ng asawa niyo, katawan na ng nanay niya. Diba? Yung happy ka na rin kasi okay na to, pastor. Okay na to. Kaya pakisabi niyo sa inyong katabi, lal na ko asawa niya. Kaya ako happy ako sa iyo eh. Kaya pakisabi niyo sa inyong katabi, lal na ko asawa niya. Alam mo kaya ako happy ako sa iyo. Payapang payapa ako sa iyo. Payapang payapa. E rin naman talaga sa mga magugulo buhay. Diba? Yung... pagandahan, pagwapuhan, payamanan. Hindi ko naman sinasabi na purkit gwapo, purkit maganda, magulo buhay. Dahil di ba hindi naman magulo buhay natin? Amen? Amen. Di ba? Itaas ang kamay ng lahat ng gwapo at maganda, pero hindi naman magulo buhay. Amen! Amen! Magtaas ang kamay lahat ng mga sinungaling. Dali, ayan. Ah, amen! Amen! Mga hipokrito. <laughs> hindi naman siyempre i-generalize yun. Eh, na? Pero maganda na na May tsura ka, bless ka pa financially, tapos dahil tapat ka sa Panginoon, may kapayapaan ka. Amen. Dahil sumusunod ka sa Panginoon, may kapayapaan ka. And this led him to fall on his knees. This led him to fall on his knees and realize that Jesus, wala ko talagang pwede ipagmalaki sa'yo. Nalulunod ako ng pagmamahal mo. Salamat Panginoon na kahit marami pa rin akong mga kakulangan, marami akong kailangan, marami akong mga... Eh, pero alam ko, nalab mo ko at hindi mo kami pababayaan. Yan ang masarap na buhay. Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Kaya minsan pa ipaalala niyo sa mga katabi niyo ito, You are blessed by God, kapatid. Paalala niyo yan sa inyo mga katabi, You are blessed by God. Kapatid. And finally, number six, that as a result of this experience with God, as a result of this experience with God, with Jesus specifically, Peter followed the Lord. Peter followed Him, Jesus, as Lord. Luke chapter 5, 11 says, After they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed Him, becoming His disciples, believing and trusting in Him, and following His example. Ang taong na-overwhelm ng love ni Jesus Christ, walang ibang gusto nang gawin yan, kundi from this day on, I want to follow the Lord. From this day on, I want to follow the Lord. Knowing all of these things, the challenge for us tonight is this. Lessons, some of the lessons we're learning from Peter. We're going to learn more in the next few messages. Trust and obey the Lord Jesus Christ. Kung meron kayong mga smartphones, pwede bang ilabas nyo muli yan? Pwede bang pagpicturean nyo ito? And for tonight, lalo na if you have a chance to post it on your Facebook status, take a picture of this challenge, post it, trust and obey the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust and obey the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Baka pag yan, ipinost nyo ngayong gabi, merong makakabasa niyan na connected sa inyo. Hihipuin ng Lord. Ginamit ka pa para maging blessing sa buhay ng iyong connection. For they will see that this is the kind of life God wants people to have. A life that trusts and obeys the Lord Jesus Christ. A life that trusts and obeys the Lord Jesus Christ. Aming Diyos at aming Ama, nagpapasalamat po kami sa mensahe ngayong gabi na binigay niyo po sa amin that reminded us na ang tao na susunod sa inyo kahit kailan hindi magsisisi. Na ang taong magtitiwala sa inyo at susunod sa inyo kahit kailan hindi magsisisi. Pinatunayan niyo po ito sa aking buhay. Pinatunayan mo kay Peter Pinatunayan mo sa marami pang ibang lingkod mo ngayon all over the planet that when they've learned to trust and obey you even during times of trials and testings, you've proven always that you let them experience 
overflowing blessings that comes from God. Tonight, mga kapatid sa Panginoon, maaring meron sa atin tinatawag ng Diyos na manampalataya sa Kanya para sa isang bagay na pinagagawa sa iyo ng Panginoon. Perhaps God is calling some of you for salvation. Natanggapin siya bilang personal Lord and Savior. But if some of you are being called by God to renew your commitment unto Him, maaring ito na yung spiritual revival mo, kapatid. Nalayo ka, matagal ka nang hindi naglilingkod tulad ng dati, marahil ito na yung panahon, God is saying, anak, masyado ng matagal, it's time for you to return. Some of you are being called by God to have a deeper commitment in ministry. Ganong araw, hindi ka masyado, ganong ka committed, but God is calling you even now, even tonight, it's time. Some are even receiving a calling from the Lord to become a pastor, to become a servant of God, to serve Him in greater ways. Don't let this night pass na hindi mo na susuko ang sarili mo sa Panginoon. Some of you are even being challenged by God to give your tithes Some of you are being challenged by God to give an offering. Some of you are being challenged by God to give a material possession. Some of you are being challenged by God to surrender something that you've been struggling for so long. Hirap na hirap kang i-give up. But tonight, God is saying, God is calling you, Anak, ito na yung iniintay mo. Ito na yun, tinatawag na kita. Kaya habang lahat ay nakapikit, habang lahat ay nakayuko, ano man yung gusto mong isuko sa Lord tonight? Ano man yung sinasabi mo sa Diyos na kailangan mo na ngayong gawin na pinagagawa niya? Ba't hindi mo itaas ang dalawang kamay sa Panginoon at nais kitang ipanalangin? Salamat sa mga kamay na yan. Just keep them raised. Baka may gusto pang umabol. Gusto mong magsuko sa Lord. Gusto mo sabihin sa Lord, Panginoon, gusto ko yung kay Peter. Gusto ko rin yung sinabi ng pastor na nagtitiwala sa iyo at sumusunod. Come and lift those hands. We're gonna pray, Father, in Jesus' name. As people lift their hands to you. Alam mo, Lord, ang kanya-kanya naming kwento. Alam mo, ang kanya-kanya naming kahinaan, struggle sa buhay, trials in life. But why is it that tonight we're hearing your voice, Lord? Why is it tonight and in the past few days we've been hearing you not only in, with our ears but we're hearing you in our hearts? Hindi lang po namin ito naiisip pero nararamdaman namin, Lord, kumikilos ka. May pinagagawa ka sa amin. And tonight, as the pastor has said, we're lifting our hands to you in surrender. We're lifting our hands to you, Lord, because we're saying, Jesus, we're trusting you. Jesus, we want to obey you completely and fully without any reservation or doubt. We want to surrender everything to you, Lord. All of the pain, all of the hurts, all of the fears, all of the worries all of the struggles, lahat ng mga logic namin, lahat ng mga nag, na, nagdidibate sa utak namin, lahat ng yan, Lord, patawarin mo kami minsan masyado kami nagtatalitalinuhan sa inyo. Patawarin mo kami minsan, Lord, imbis na men of faith, women of faith, Lord, we become doubters. Forgive us, Lord, for worrying too much. Minsan nagkakasakit na kami dahil sa stress, Del apektatong apektado kami ng aming iniinda, ng aming iniintindi, ng bayarin, ng problema sa bahay, pamilya, asawa, anak, kapatid, anak. Lord, forgive us that we think too much but we do not pray enough. That we overthink things but we do not have faith in you. But tonight, through the lessons we're learning from the life of Peter, even through the book of John, through the Bible, thank you for reminding us Thank you for tonight that you're challenging us to trust and obey the Lord. To trust and obey the Lord. Mga kapatid, kanya-kanya tayo ng kwento, kaya habang nakataas yung inyong mga kamay, habang nakataas ang inyong mga kamay, alam mo naman na siguro kung ano yung pinagagawa sa iyo ng Lord. Alam mo na yung pinapasuko niya. Habang nakataas yung dalawang kamay na yan, hihilingin ko sa iyo ngayon, make your own prayer to God. Say your own prayer to the Lord. And begin to tell God, Lord, I surrender this. Lord, I trust you for this. Lord, I'm obeying you for this. Begin to talk to the Lord and say to Him, Lord, buong buo, sinusuko ko sa iyo lahat. Buong buo, Panginoon, susunod ako sa iyo. Come and lift those hands and say to Jesus what you want to say to Him. 
Let the Lord minister to you. Let the Lord minister to you tonight. Lift those hands and let Him reach to you. Let Him embrace you. Let Him wipe away the tears. Hayaan mong tapikin ng Panginoon ang iyong balika at yakapin ka, hinayakap ka ngayon ng Panginoon at pinapaalala sa iyo, anak, hindi kita iiwan at pababayaan kailan pa man. Come and lift those hands and be ready to receive great and mighty blessings of the Lord. Be ready to throw your net. Be ready to throw your net and see them be filled with, with, with lots of fish that your boat will sink with overflowing blessing. Come and lift those hands and receive by faith in Jesus' name. Receive by faith in Jesus' name.